Is health care a human right? In the boisterous debate over health care reform here in the U.S., where we get hung up on talk of death panels, public options, and ballooning debt, we don't hear much about that critical question. Well, in his new book, The Healing of America, A Global Quest for Better, Cheaper, and Fairer Health Care, former Washington Post correspondent and best-selling author T.R. Reid took up that question as he traveled around the world to examine the health care systems and reforms in other countries. And he joins me now to shed some light on what we could learn by looking beyond our borders. Well, is health care viewed as a human right elsewhere? Yes, Enrique, in every other developed democracy. And we don't. And the United States does. And this is what I was looking at in my book. I went around the world for this reason. All the other industrialized free market democracies, countries like us, provide health care coverage for everybody of high quality, and they spend half as much as we do. So how do you do that? That's what I went to see. It turned out while I was doing it that another important question is, why do you do it? Why would a country commit to provide health care for everybody who needs it? You think about that for a minute or two, and you start asking, why doesn't the world's richest country well, commit to health care? Why, why can't we seem to do what... Uh, other countries in Europe and elsewhere in Asia are able to do? Yeah, you asked me the hardest question <laughs> in my book. I think I figured out how they do it. I think I figured out why the other guys do it. I'm still struggling with why we don't do it. Um, I think, I say in my book, we've never really had this argument. We never talk it out. Every time we talk about health care, we get to, if the goal, if you say the goal is universal coverage at a reasonable cost, that's what all the other countries have. We lose track of that and we get worried about insurance company reimbursement or hospital company profit levels or doctor's pay. We get so, you know, socialized medicine, all that stuff, we lose track of the uh, basic goal. And that's happened again in this debate. And, and that basic goal actually comes back to it being a human right. Or is there a moral reason to make sure that all of your people are covered? Well, all the other countries have decided this is a fundamental moral obligation of a rich society. Poor countries don't provide health care for everybody. They can't afford it. Right. But, you know, Canada, Germany, Britain, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, Switzerland, they all guarantee health care to everybody, and they say it's a social obligation. We're all in this together. In contrast, in our country, the richest country, the National Academy of Sciences says about 22,000 Americans die every year of treatable diseases because they can't afford a doctor. No other country lets that happen. So talk about what you found and, and why you think it's working elsewhere. So what I found is, guess what, it's not all socialized medicine overseas. There are lots of different approaches to universal coverage. Some countries do have socialized medicine in, say, Britain, Spain, Italy, Government owns the hospitals, government employs the doctors, and government pays all the bills. I'd call that socialized medicine. Um, in c countries like Canada, Australia, the doctors and hospitals are private. Drug companies are private, but the payment system is public. So what do you call that, half socialized? Uh, but in many rich countries, Germany, uh, Belgium, France, Switzerland, Japan, they cover everybody with private docs, private hospitals, and private insurance. It's not socialized medicine in those countries, but they've made the commitment to cover everybody, and they found a mechanism to do it. So what you discovered is about, what, three or four different types of models? Here? Yes, uh, I just gave you three. The fourth model is in most of the world. In the poor world, there's no health care system. And in my book, I call that the out-of-pocket model. <clears throat> if your kid is sick, you have some money in your pocket to pay the doctor, she gets treated. If you don't have any money, well, you can pay in potatoes, you can weave a rug, but if you have nothing, your kid stays sick or dies. It's brutal, but that's the system in most of the world. So are we so hung up on, I guess, the free market part of this? Is that why we can't seem to do... Yeah, I think a lot of it... Yes, I'm sorry. I, I think a lot of it is ideological. Uh, we Americans are convinced that for-profit, free enterprise is the best way to provide most goods and services. You know, it may not be true in the case of health care. If you look at uh, our health insurance industry, it's, the only, it's for a for-profit competitive industry. Administrative costs of 20%. They add 20% to every bill they paid. In France, they have, they have private insurance companies that are non-profit. Their administrative costs are 4%. Germany, 5%. Japan, about 5%. In Canada, where the payment system is government, you know, those lazy, unpaid, overpaid government bureaucrats we hear about, their administrative costs are 6%, less than half of what our private companies have. So 
at least in health care, for-profit competitive free enterprise doesn't turn out to be the most efficient way to pay. Have you seen anybody in the Congress or here in the States take some time to really look to see what other people are doing, other countries are doing, to try to see if you can apply it to our health care reform efforts, or are we too arrogant that we can't do that? Yeah, that's a really tough question. I mean, I wrote a whole book saying we could learn a lot from these other countries. They've solved the same problems that we're looking at now. Um, and a lot of people, you know, there's this notion of American exceptionalism. We're bigger, we're better. We don't need to ask the British how to do something. But as I argue in my book, we've learned a lot from other countries, a lot of parts of American life. We borrowed from other countries. Text messaging, that's Finland. The interstate highway system we got from Germany. Public broadcasting, here we are. This is a British innovation. British. Yoga, sushi, pizza, even American Idol we borrowed from the Brits. <laughs> so why not borrow some ideas about health care? Yeah, there's a, there's a show called Ugly Betty that we borrowed from the Mexicans. Is that where we got that? Yeah, really? that's right. Yeah, yeah, it started yeah, in yeah, Mexico. Yeah. Um, Let's get back to who you think it really has the best model in the world as far as a health care system. Well, i got to say, as a husband, a father, and a patient, when we lived in Britain, that was good care. The, your, your kid wakes up in the morning with an earache. You call the doctor. She comes to your house. They make house calls. She treats your kid, maybe gives her penicillin shot, and then guess what happens, Enrique? The doctor walks out the door. No copay, no deductible, no bill, no nothing. In Britain, you go your whole life and never get a doctor bill. I liked it, and the care was good. But that's a government-run system. That may be too socialist for America. Uh, Japan has the best health statistics in the world, the healthiest population in the world. They go to the doctor 15 times a year. We average about five. And yet, uh, better recovery rates from every major disease than we have. They spend half as much per capita as we do in a private system. So I think there's a lot in, in that model we could borrow. Um, in France, there are 61 million people in France, and every single one of them has a little green card with a gold chip on it that has their medical record. There's no paper in the French system. The doctor treats you, hits one key on the computer, and in three days, the insurance company has to pay your bill. Do you think France really has the best system of everybody? Well, the World Health Organization hired a couple of Americans to study, and they rated France number one. That's a very good system, really good um, health results, very good health outcomes. But the doctors don't make much, and the hospitals make a lot less than they do in America. And the insurance companies, of course, are nonprofit, as they are in most countries. So it's a good system. Is it the best? I don't know. Here's the deal. France has had these digital, these electronic medical records for everybody since 2004. The official U.S. government goal is to get to half of our people with digital records by 2014. So how about that, Americans? We're going to be half as good as France 10 years later. Is that acceptable to us? A lot of Americans probably don't like hearing that at all. No. And um, I guess, you know, one of the things out of this, too, is that this was a personal thing for you. It took you, what, three years to write this book? Yes. But you yes. also, you had a bum shoulder that you had from your Navy years. And as you traveled around the world, you had different uh, doctors look at this. And did that give you insight as to how different systems work? Yeah, it definitely helped. So look, I got one fine shoulder, and this shoulder only goes this high. I was going around the world anyway looking for good health care systems. So I said, well, maybe I'll find a good doc for my shoulder, too. So everywhere I went, I went to see the orthopedic surgeon and the specialist to see what they would do, what kind of treatment they'd give me, how much it would cost, how long I'd have to wait. And that's all in the book. And that gave me a better insight. I went as a patient as well as a reporter. And guess what happened? <coughs> uh, my shoulder's a lot better. Less pain, a little more movement. It's not perfectly cured. But I came home with a better shoulder, and I also came home convinced that we could fix our health care system because the other countries like us have done it. And the best treatment was in India? The best oh, treatment I got in India, I mean, there were several countries that would have given me the American-style high-tech surgery where they cut, cut out your shoulder and put in a titanium shoulder. Probably would have worked. In America, it would have cost $47,000. In France, the price was only $6,000 for the same procedure. But, uh, yeah, in India, I went to India, and they treat you with herbal massage. Get this. You lie on a table and six guys massage your body with warm oils. I did it three times a day for five weeks. It was marvelous. <laughs> Felt great. And I did get more movement and less pain out of that. So, yeah, the Indian system helped too. But this is not to say that everywhere you went there, even though you saw a lot of things that could probably be working better here, yeah. 
uh, doesn't, not everything worked great. No, no, no system is perfect. They're all struggling with the same problems we have, aging populations. This high-tech medicine is great. It reduces pain, it saves lives, but it's really expensive, and every country is struggling with high medical costs. Do you think Americans understand that uh, really the, the difficulty or the challenges our health system faces, or I guess in some respects what some people say our lousy health care system? Yeah, well, uh, look, some Americans get the best care in the world. There's no question. We have brilliant doctors. I think we have the best hospitals in the world, and people who have access to it get world-class care. The problem with our system is the tens of millions of people who don't get in the door. You know, if you're uninsured, you might get some health care. A lot of people get none. I mean, to me, it bugs me. In the richest country in the world, there are children going to bed at night with an earache, with an asthma attack, with a toothache because their parents can't afford care. That wouldn't happen in any other rich country. So it's the unfairness of our system and the complications of our system make it so much more expensive. We're shelling out the big bucks, but we're not getting the kind of care we ought to. Uh, finally, you are working on another film. You did some work for Frontline, Sick Around the World. Yes. It was one of the documentaries you did, and now you're doing another documentary uh, with WETA, or NET, pardon me, in yes. New York. Uh, tell me a little bit about that project. Uh, here's the deal. If you look at Medicare treatment records, um, in Miami, for example, the average annual fee for treating a Medicare patient is $17,000. In Colorado, the average fee for a same age patient is $5,000, and the results are just as good. So there's a lot of excess money flowing through this $400 billion Medicare system, and we're going to make this film and see if we can figure out why those differences exist and why the government still pays Miami three times as much as they pay a hospital in Denver. Well, the book is called The Healing of America, A Global Quest for Better, Cheaper, and Fair Health Care, and the author is T.R. Reed. Thank you for your time and uh, a lot of food for thought here as we and Reiki, go through thank this you. debate. Thanks right. a lot. Delighted to be here.